and welcome to another episode of BYOB. I am Nola Nash. She is. I'm Laura Kemp. And he is Benny Sims. I'm Benny Sims. And we are so excited to have you here today. Um, we are glad that Laura is feeling better. Um, so we've rescheduled from last yes. week. We banged Laura, but we lost Claire. <laughs> so. I'm so sorry. I feel bad. <laughs> Oh, no. it's been one of these things that it's just, you know, we're going to get everybody together eventually and we'll, we'll catch up with everybody. Um, Claire's having internet issues out there um, in her world. So we're going to, we're going to catch up with her a little later on because we love us in Claire Fullerton, but we've got Benny <laughs> Sims here and we have, I mean, of course, you know me, I brought the booze. <laughs> because that's you know my her. job. And I brought that's the my job. Is it booze? Because if that's booze, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. I gotta sit down to a family supper after this. No, it's water. We'll know by the end of the show if that was water. I've got an empty coffee cup. Qualifies. So (laughs) empty. Better if there's something in it. Yeah. Yeah, Well, it's it's a little late in the day for caffeine, so. (laughs) Betty's up all night. But I'm gonna go ahead and answer the question: Is it too early to drink? No. Never. I am from South Louisiana, the land of breakfast, daiquiris, mimosas, and Bloody Marys. Hello. It is never <laughs> too early to drink. We drink with breakfast. So all day long. Here we go. All right. So we are going to teach Laura some Laura. Southern. Laura's going to teach us some Michiganian. <laughs> what is, what is yeah, it? Yeah, sure. Michiganderisms. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna Michiganianism. Uh, who decides Michigan what words. it actually is? So Laura's gonna teach us some Michigan words. We're gonna we're gonna put some South in Laura's mouth and teach her some Southern phrases here. But first up, let's first talk about what we're reading because we we you know it's a book show, right? I mean, we talk about books. Show. We should talk about books. No, too. we gotta talk about Benny's book too and Benny's book. Absolutely. See, so some cool stuff happen. Yes, he does. So he's got some book news. So first, let's talk about what we are reading so we do try to read among the writing that we're doing <laughs> we do try um, sometimes it's fast sporadic so envious of you no well, only so. because like i said i read to the exclusion of all else and that is not healthy <laughs> and so i don't recommend it uh family can sometimes be like mom no i'm sorry this book has got to be read so i Binge read. I binge read is what I do. I, I could binge worse things. So binge reading is not that bad. Sure. You could. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I am working on reading um, Into the Wild Light, which is by my friend Jeff Zentner. He writes fantastic um, books for, for young people, um, high school age. Fabulous stuff. Jeff's writing to me verges on poetry. I mean, it is just gorgeous stuff. He will make you laugh. You will fall in love with the the characters that he writes, and then he will rip your heart out at some point in that book. You will be sobbing and you will be loving every minute of it. So Into the Wild Light is actually um, special to me among Jeff's books because my son actually helped him with some of the research that he did on the book. Um, It's about a Southern kid that goes up to a Northern prep school. And Jeff um, did a lot of talking to my son, who is a Southern kid who went up to a Northern prep school about what life is like there because Jeff wanted to make sure that he got it right. And so Camden helped him out a lot with that. And so it's a special book to me. And I'm Mm -hmm. really excited to actually be reading kind of how all of that, you know, several years ago that they were doing this, you know, the book process takes so long. So it's kind of fun to finally see it um, on the page now. So I am working on Into the Wild Light by Jeff Zentner. Fabulous book. What about you guys? Well, I'm so ashamed. I haven't been, I haven't been reading. I've been editing the third. It's true. Um, I've been binge watching Netflix. Or no. <laughs> Fine video. So I've been watching the tutors, which I'm enraptured with because I have a small crush on Henry Cavill. And um, I was sick. So when I was sick, what do you do? I lay in bed and I watch the tutors. Um, It's not a book. 
But I do have a book that I'm going to hold up because I had this fellow on Cut Camp the other day, and he has a new release. And it's called Dad by Stephen Manchester. He's such a cool guy and such a nice guy. I wish I could say all of the wonderful things that I have read the book and I can, you know, tell you what it's all about, but I can't because I'm watching the tutors. <laughs> I'm bad, but I wanted it's... to hold it up because he was just on Cap Camp and he just released this book and he was so nice to, enough to send me a copy. That's awesome. And I wanted to give him a little shout out and he's just a really cool guy. He's a really nice guy. I really like him a lot. So I know, I know. It's always good to to give shout outs to those authors that we know and love. And speaking of authors that we know and love, we got Benny Sims over here. And <laughs> Benny is the author of Code Gray. And Code Gray is a fantastic political thriller. And Benny, Benny. why don't you tell the folks a little bit about, well, introduce yourself. I mean, we just we know Benny, so we just jumped into the conversation. But hey, folks Benny. out there <laughs> might not know you. Don't you know so, Benny? But you should know you Benny, know. right? Benny. So Benny, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit, or them, a little bit about Code Gray. Laura and I know all about it, so we're going <laughs> to, we read it. <laughs> so we're going to, uh, we're going to let the other folks know. As, as far as about me, born and raised in uh, Tennessee, uh, that's why we're doing this Southern thing today is, you know, got to help Laura out uh, with Southern <laughs> accents. Uh, born and raised in Tennessee, uh, but I've lived in, in Alabama ever since 1987. That's where I worked. Uh, retired a couple of years ago. We moved to South Alabama, L.A. We call it L.A. means lower Alabama. So <laughs> this is the real L.A. down here. And uh, uh uh, married, got two grown, my two uh, boys are, are grown and living off on their own. They live uh, in North Alabama in Huntsville. I'd say Huntsville is supposed to be Huntsville, right? No, Huntsville. 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 It's the right way to say it. <laughs> right. I um, <laughs> <laughs> and I learned. And as for my book, Code Gray, uh, uh, I wrote this, started in 2005, finished it. 2014, just one of those long-term life gets in the way. You can only write every so often kind of thing. Uh, finally got it published. What year was it, guys? 2018, 19? 19, I think. Mm -hmm. That came out right around the time of Moon did, right? It, it uh, yeah, uh, the book was, was published. And in, 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 that's when I was I signed with, with Panda Moon. Uh, the book was published in 2020. Oh, that's right. Two two years ago, this coming February, uh, and it's a political thriller. It's uh, it's based on a presidential election, and members of the media are getting killed. And uh, my protagonist is a FBI agent uh, who's been around for a long time, and his job is to find the killer. You know, there's a lot of twist turns, shootouts, cuss words, things like that in there. Cuss so, words. <laughs> good stuff. So the good stuff. Uh, but the, the news that y'all were talking about was uh, uh, I entered it in a uh, uh, writer's conference uh, competition, I guess you call it. Uh, Killer Nashville is one of the biggest uh, crime, thriller, uh, suspense, mystery, supernatural uh, uh, in the country. It's very well known, and I entered it in the mystery uh, division, and lo and behold, it won. It won best. Let me get it up here. There's, see that little silver thingy right there that says silver, Fal <laughs> silver Fouch in winter. Uh, so that was one of the greatest nights of my life, which, by the way, happened the night after I finally got to meet, meet Nola. Uh, so this is after, the past night of your after, life. After, <laughs> you know, talking with her online and, and uh, you know, being with the same publisher for a couple of years, I finally got to meet her. So that was that was a weekend to remember right there. I'm telling you. It everything sure was. And uh, it was so now, exciting for me to be there with you and, and to know that you were in the same town. I mean, Killer Nashville is a great conference. And, I mean, just so much fun to have you there, to be able to sit down really and have dinner is. with you. And then to be able it to be really like, is. yes, Benny won. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah, that was that. Uh, I I will say that I will say that when you when you bribe the judges, it really pays off. 
it really <laughs> makes a big difference, you know, when you get it. Does it does help, doesn't it? It just, That's you know, it may cost a little wrong. bit, but it's worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, Jay's it's knowledge, worth. you know that? Yeah. Wow. I mean, right. you got to. Yeah, you got to come off the hip a little bit with some money and, you know, <laughs> slip them some money and say, keep it fair, keep it fair, keep it fair. It's and, shiny quarter. Uh, it works. Shiny quarter. So, a nice yeah. shiny quarter. Now, as far as, uh, as far as the books I'm reading, uh, I've met some incredible authors uh, at, at Gilbert National. And, mm-hmm. and I bought several of their books. And the guy that I thought who was really going to win the mystery Silver Fountain and this guy, Daddy Nichols Hallway, and he's got a book called Three Houses on the Hill. I can't center up on the camera very well. Super nice guy, and this this is an awesome book. And, and Noah, his writing is very similar to yours. Ooh. His writing style is very similar to yours. Yeah, and this is this is Three a great book. On hill. But I also met I'll, Three Houses on the Hill, and I also met a lady named Lisa Black. That's her pen name. And it's a book called Trail of Blood. And I will say this is one of the absolute best books I've ever, ever read. It is it is a crime thriller uh, based on an American version of Jack the Ripper. And which, Ooh. by the way, really happened. But this this is an intriguing, well written story. I can't again? say enough good things about it. Is that What's Trail of Blood? Trail, Trail of Blood. Blood. I'd have to stop watching yep. the tours. Turn that TV off for me. From Henry Cavill. Choice. So anyway, that's that's what I've been that's what I've been reading. Awesome. Now you've got book news, breaking news. I mean, we've been writing and all of that, but Benny's got some breaking news. Your book uh, is soon to be a. Audiobook, perhaps? Audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. exciting. It will, be, it will be an audio. Uh, it'll be several months more down the road, but it's just the recording on it just getting started uh, this That's week so or, or maybe early next week. Yeah. Uh, I had a lot of people ask me if I was going to narrate it myself, a lot of my friends. And, of course, after I finished laughing my butt off, about that uh, i said i said no i i've got a voice made for newspapers so i don't you know I, i'm just not gonna i'm gonna let the no, professionals do this voice. so does it have a good radio voice it's a good radio voice yeah. could have done it comforting yeah. everything's yeah. gonna be okay you could have done yeah. it Kind of good. You've got a good voice. Give yourself well, some you credit know, there, Benny. I've not heard people, you know, the, the it's it's you know, there's a reason why people with radio voices are on radio and not TV. <laughs> you know, face made for radio kind of thing. So, so anyway, uh, I just I, I was just write. on radio. I just I was write. a DJ. <laughs> I was All a DJ right. for years. I can see that. <laughs> I yep, I that. was a DJ I in college, and then I was a DJ actually in Huntsville, Alabama. I was a, I lived and worked in the Muscle Shoals area of Alabama, and I was on a classic rock radio station that actually broadcasted out of Sheffield, Alabama, um, and it broadcasted into Huntsville. It was a classic rock, hundred thousand watt classic rock radio station. So That's that so cool. midday. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> I've never oh. heard that about you. I was. I did midday's How classic cool rock. That? <laughs> that was. You'd be like in a little booth back there. That's by pretty yourself. cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. Records, Taking uh, requests. <laughs> all that I'm stuff. Out. Yep. I was a DJ. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's cool. The many lives of Nola Nash. I, I never knew that. Nola, that's very cool. You should have told me. Yep, I was a DJ broadcasting out of Huntsville, Alabama, in the Shoals, but we were Huntsville's classic rock station. So, yep, 100,000 watts of me middays. You know, there you go. Terry <laughs> Shepard used to do that, too, up in Cadillac. Did he ever tell you about his? How, how long did yeah. yeah. I can't remember what, what station it was, but I knew Terry was a radio guy, too. And he yeah, was like, does he have the voice? And when we go to our property, so I need to take a picture and send it to him. Because yes, he said he used to go in there, and he said that sometimes during deer hunt, because deer hunt's real big in northern Michigan, that the bullets would be flying. 
<laughs> okay. I never had to contend with that. I was up the street. I guess it was actually Tuscumbia, Alabama, which is where the radio station was. I was just up the street from Helen Keller's home, from Ivy Green. Oh, I passed Helen Keller's house every day on my way to work. The water pump, the water pump mm -hmm. is there and everything. The real oh. yeah, It's a museum now. Mm -hmm. It's a museum. But I, I would pass Ivy Green every day. I need to get you need down to there. You need to come I down. There are things my, uh, to do. There are. There's Both of my place. sons went to University of North yeah. Alabama anyway. So. UNA is a great school. I'm very, I'm very familiar with the Shoals and, and mm -hmm. you know, Florence, Florence, all that area. It's, it's, it's a great beautiful. area. Really, really pretty right. area. Um, but I'm terrified right. of driving over the dam. So, you know, there, there's a dam. You can either go over the bridge, yeah. over the, the river, or you can go over the dam. And I was always afraid of the dam. I had to always go out of my way to drive over really? the river bridge the instead bridge. of the dam. Right. What was scary about the dam? I don't know. I guess I'd never grown up around dams. I mean, we don't have them in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. There's no levels. <laughs> so your water's all flat, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. The, I, the locks just freaked me out. And I was always so afraid the dam was going to burst and, you know, um, I was going to end up in the Tennessee River. That's, do you know. drive in front of it? Do you drive in front of the dam? You drive over the dam. Like you're driving oh. over it. But I was always afraid, you know, I'm going to be the one that's going to be gonna on the dam when it bursts. Like, you know, that was going to be my thing. But no, oh. it, it, it was perfectly safe to drive over the dam, I'm quite sure. But it just wigged me out. Yeah, and I just I would not do it unless I had to. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> Love that area. It's right. beautiful, but right. the dams just freaked me out. It is. So I, didn't, I didn't do it. All right. So we've got some Southern phrases. We promised to put some South and Laura's mouth, and Laura's going to teach us how to say some Michigan things. Some South and Laura's mouth. South and Laura's mouth. We're going to put some South and Laura's mouth. Now, okay. We have a variety of phrases. So, Benny, I'm sure you have some. I've got some, and I have to keep them straight. There are some great Southern phrases and there are great phrases all over the country. And some of these, you may see them pop up in other areas. And I have to think that perhaps it's because they've migrated north. I don't think that there's a lot of these <laughs> that originated up there. Um, now, pitching a hissy fit is something that I, I think has probably migrated oh, a bit I further. I know pitching a hissy fit. Now, pitching I guess I say it like you. You gotta pitch in a hissy fit. Pitch in a hissy fit. Yeah, you gotta pitch a hissy fit. Right. And it's like, fit mm -hmm. is like two syllables, right? Pitch in yeah. a hissy fit. Yeah. Now, if you really yeah. wanna say that somebody's throwing a fit, then you can say that they are pitching a dine duck fit. <laughs> And that is like the pitching biggest hissy duck. fit. Exactly. Right. Pitching a dine duck fit. It's like. I've actually got that on my list. <laughs> You pitch in a dime duck fit. I got that on my list. <laughs> yeah. And, and let me say, let me say, you, you you have to pitch a fit. You can't have a fit. You have to no, pitch, a fit. pitch a fit. You're not you either a fit. pitch a fit right or you throw a fit. And throw it doesn't fit. have any, no, right. not throw. Throw a fit. Throw a Throw a hissy fit. There's no R. Throw a fit. Throw. Yeah. You throw a fit. Throw a dime duck fit. You can throw a dine, dine duck. duck fit, or you can pitch a dine duck fit. You can throw it's a hissy fit, and you can pitch fit. a hissy fit. Mm. <laughs> right. That's how that one goes. All right, so I've, I covered hissy fits and dine duck fits. So, Benny, what, what have you got over there? Give us one. Oh, gosh, I've got I've got tons of stuff here. So. Uh, <laughs> we going to just you. Have you ever heard any, anybody? Uh, you, ever, you remember the movie, uh, Old Brother for Hard Pal? Oh yes, one of my favorites. And and there Love was it. a scene where George Clooney was talking about, yeah, he George Clooney talked about you guys are dumber than a sack of hammers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I've heard that all my life, but I hammers. Okay, I've heard that, and I've also heard dumber than a sack of hair, the and sack of dumber hair. than a sack of doorknobs, or dumber oh, than yeah, a dumb, dumber than a doorknob. Yeah, dumber, dumber than doorknob. a box I've of heard rocks. That. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's, it's yeah. not just a doorknob, though. It's a sack of doorknobs. Sack of doorknobs. Or, 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 that's real dumb. Sack of doorknobs. Okay. I got all sorts yeah, of things to do in my middle or school. Or dumb as a post. <laughs> yes, dumb as a post. Dumb as a post. I've heard Dumb as a post. Dumb as a post. Now, here's right. some for right. people with right. a bat that are, that are like shady, like bad characters. So you've heard mm -hmm. the snake in the grass. You know, mm -hmm. people are snake in the grass, right? Well, here's another one. 
He's slicker now shit. <laughs> slicker now <laughs> shit. <laughs> so if he's slick, oh, man. he's slicker now shit. <laughs> slicker now. Yep. There's one for you. There's one for you. Yeah. So we got, and um, meaner than a wet panther. <laughs> wet panther. Meaner than a wet panther. And, you know, meaner and meaner and please all meaner than meaner and a wet panther. Meaner and a wet panther. Do you have yeah, panthers in the south? Do you have panthers? Okay. Mm -hmm. We do. Cougars. We have cougars up here. I don't know. Cougars, mind. panthers. Yeah. And we, we, yeah, we got some other things. Yeah. And, or just, or, that's just what they think that we have there. Um, um, let's see. Oh, let me find some of the ones that are. <laughs> I love this one because it's just funny. So, if a southerner is busy, they might say that she's busier than a cat covering a crap on a marble floor. <laughs> is there busier than a cat covering covering a, a crap on a marble floor? floor. Benny, have you heard these? <laughs> <laughs> Benny's like, I think. Those yeah, I'm, I'm some, or maybe some variations of it. Yeah. Or you yeah, might I'll say, you, you know, you might so. say you've been running over all over Hell's Half Acre. <laughs> like you're okay, just running all over town. Hell's yeah, Half Acre. Hell's Half Acre. Mm -hmm. I have heard that. That's being busy. No, so we've got busy I, ones. I'm sure Laura's probably. <laughs> I just like the way Benny says my name. Laura. 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 What's some other ones you've got on your list, Benny? I've, I've got tons Laura. over here, but I know you've got some. Laura. Give Laura another one. All right, you've heard of things. You've heard of things being described as ugly, ugly as ugly as. The, my favorite one is ugly as a mud fence. Yes. A mud. Ugly as a mud fence. I've heard ugly uh, as a mud that, fence. That, that, Most fence, I think. Yeah. But, oh. that, Let's see if I've yeah, got something about ugly. Uh, probably one of my oh. favorite sayings. One of my favorite sayings that I say is is talking about. You know, people with messy hair, you know, their hair is all messy. And you ask them, what did you comb your hair with? Uh, an egg beater. An egg, you know? beater. <laughs> um, egg beater. Or my favorite is, my favorite is when you ask them, what did you comb your hair with? A firecracker, you know? So, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or you can ask them, roast. Ask them if they combed it with lightning, you know? Oh, lightning. <laughs> so, <laughs> those those are, up. you know, some, have you guys would, heard? Of, would you comb your hair with lightning? Uh, no, just plain electricity. <laughs> I I had a friend from Arkansas who taught me the word "weren't." Do you guys know "weren't"? Weren't. Oh, that's weren't. I bet Claire Fullerton oh, knows weren't. Hello. <laughs> Surprise again, Claire Fullerton <laughs> joining in at the last second. Look at you, girl. Welcome. It, the internet. It's been off for a week. It just came up. Oh, <laughs> see the show. It, we're meant charmed. To it's this meant to be. I'm meant to be with my posse for yes. a solid week. Y'all come on. Guess who's here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. So no, we've been not, teaching never. Laura Southern. Oh. I've been really teaching her some sorry yeah, southern words. phrases. Now she's talking about ruined, which all, we all Rurt. know ruined. <laughs> now you spell this ruined. Rurt. So and things are ruined. Yeah, I was like, what? They were always ruined. Now, so, now we've been talking about how to t tell people are ugly you know, or they they don't look good. She's so <laughs> ugly she could eat a corn through a picket fence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the teeth. <laughs> her teeth are so buck. Teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep, I like this one. He fell out the ugly tree and he hit every branch on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Those are so funny. Oh, gosh, the oh and the, you know, we've all done the one. You know, I just feel like I've been chewed up and spit out. I mean, is that is that one migrated out of the south too? Mm -hmm. okay. Have you we done? Got, she looks road hard and put up wet. Put up wet. Yep, road hard and put up wet. <laughs> See, I, I like this one. He looks like ten miles a bad road. <laughs> oh, no, I have not heard yeah. that one. Ten and she looks like road. she looks like the hind end of hard times. <laughs> I like Ooh. that one too. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, there's a there's a 
there's one that's like that. Says he looks he looks like the north end of a south sound mule. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, the north end of South Bend. That's on my list too. How did yeah, okay. <laughs> Yep, north end of Southbound Mule. <laughs> right. That's pretty ugly. That's pretty that ugly. That is pretty ugly. Pretty ugly. Um, let's see. Let's see. There's so many good ones. Oh gosh. Some of these are probably even though I've said a few that are a little off color, <laughs> there's some really off color ones in the south. <laughs> we won't talk about those. We won't <laughs> talk about those. Uh, the South is where sushi is still called bait. Uh, bait. <laughs> bait. It's, yeah. it's raw fish. Yeah. <laughs> South, where right. sushi is still called bait. Right. Well, that's, I right. like that one. Have you ever, uh, uh, Nola, have you ever heard, heard anybody say, use the word learn when they mean, mean teach? Like, we've uh-huh. got to learn, Laura, how to speak Southern. Yep. Them. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's another one. Piddling. Piddling is a word that can either be an adjective or a verb. So, you know, piddling, right. it can just be piddling around. You know, we piddle around. Piddling all around. Time. Yeah. Or piddling right. around. But piddling can also be an adjective because you can say, you know, that, that, I don't know. It's just, they just, they don't have much. It's just piddling. <laughs> it's just piddling. <laughs> so it's like a little bitty amount, you know. So it can be different things. Yeah, exactly. um, let's right. see. What are some right. other ones? I love Southern words are just fun. I mean, I don't use things like highfalutin. I actually do say things like highfalutin. I, I, I should, I guess. Uh, Caddy Wampus. Caddy, Caddy Wampus, Caddy Wampus, I think, Wampus, has that's migrated. Wampus. That's a word that's gone north. What does Caddy Wampus mean? Because it's my favorite store up on Mackinac Island. All it's of cute. It means it's, it's all upside down. Mm-hmm, kind of wacky. Like, it's, okay. it's, it's out of order. It's out, it's, out, it's, out, it's out of order. Okay. Out of okay. Yeah. Like squeehawed. Nobody yeah. yeah. Like I, I think it actually originated in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Uh, Catawild, mm-hmm. you know that that type of word, but yeah, it it means sideways. Now, okay. cattywampus is sideways. Mm-hmm. Catterwalling is a whole yeah. other thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're catterwalling, then Catter- you're just you're screaming, you're crying, and yelling, mm-hmm. and making all kind of noise. You're just, Stop that catterwalling! I don't know. Maybe I am. <laughs> so you know, there's some southern words that have migrated. You guys heard of squeehog? Any of you guys heard of squeehog? Only because you've told me squeehog. Okay. That's My mom it. thinks it came from Kentucky, but I don't know. Nobody's ever heard of it. Well, we're not from not Kentucky. Not. So maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's, it's a truly yeah, Kentucky word. Caddy Wampus, same thing. Everything's messed up. Okay. There we go. There we go. I don't know. I don't work. Um, let's see. What are some ones like tan your hide? I mean, that, that is one I heard a lot as a child. <laughs> you know, up, I'm going to tan, tan your hide. <laughs> or I'm going to get a switch. I'm going to get a switch. Going to get a switch. Oh, God. When somebody puts their hands on their hips and just stands there like that and they're looking up at the tree out the window, you run because they're picking the switch before they even walk out the door. Yeah, and I'll knock you into next week. Yep. <laughs> knock you into next week. Oh, my gosh. I, yep. Those are all things I have heard. Now, Laura, you've got some words for us and we don't know how to say these words, most of them. Let's see if you can figure it out. All right, so here we go. Number one. Laura has given us a list. So number Number one, one. what do we think that says? I got island. (laughs) (laughs) I just learned how to pronounce this a few weeks ago. I haven't saying it wrong. Now, if if I were to say it like a Louisianian, Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be Bablanc Island. Yeah, I've been calling it Bois Blanc, but that's not correct. Anybody have a guess? No. That is Pablo Island. What? Pablo. Yeah, it's all messed up. That is not Pablo Island. I know. That's how we (laughs) pronounce it in Michigan. It's not by Mackinac. It's Pablo. You said Mackinac wrong, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mackinac. Somehow Mackinac became Mackinac. Well, I know. It is. The Mackinac is pronounced Mackinac. The island. So I did not know that. So if you know somebody, if they come up and they say I'm on Mackinac Island, you know that they are not from the area because it's Mackinac. <laughs> Mackinac. Now, number two be. looks like Dwajiak. 
You are correct, and that's right where I live. Did I get it? Dwajia, Dwajia. Yeah, that's a small town, kind of close to me. Yeah, that's oh. I, you get a silver shiny quarter. Yay! <laughs> star. All right, who wants to take number three? This is from my book. This place. Akia. Uh, anybody? Akia. Oh, it's like okay. Ooh, who said <laughs> that? Claire. Claire. Akiak. Yes, it means crooked water. Oh. I think in the Oshawa. Crooked water. Yeah. Now, number, number four, I've always said Sault Ste. Marie. Is that not right? That is correct. Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah, oh, nice. All right. The number five. Benny, I want to hear you I say number five. <laughs> I can't see the list. I don't know where I'm looking at. Oh. oh. <laughs> Just guess. I can't. <laughs> where, what happened to it? Claire, do you know that one? Ypsilanti? Yes. Oh, good. Yipsy. That's a town over by Ann Arbor. Oh, Yipsy. Ypsilanti. Now, I need to you added, harder. what does it mean? I need to pick oh. harder words. Well, I don't know. These were these were pretty hard. I mean, we were truly <laughs> guessing at some of these. We just happened to guess right. <laughs> I happened to guess right at Dwanjiak. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is not going to get number one. Control means you are a police officer. Is that a police cruiser? No. No. Is a youper somebody from the upper UP, from the Upper Peninsula? Is that it? Like UP? Youper. 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 A. Ah, those youpers. Yeah. Is that what a troll is too? Is it the same thing? Troll is us. Well, me from the lower peninsula because we live oh. under the bridge. Oh. And the uh, youpers live above the bridge and the trolls live under. So we're all trolls. And Troll. then the youpers think they just so special up there. <laughs> and they are. You person trolls. <laughs> I love yeah, it. one more troll oh, than you <laughs> Well, Claire, now that you have joined us and we were kind of jumping into all of our other stuff, I want you to introduce yourself to folks who may not know you and your work as well. We, we let Benny do that earlier, but you are here and we are so glad you're here. And I want folks to know why we're so glad that you're here, because we just love you and your work. Well, I love you back, Nola Nash and Laura Kemp. I remain your fan, as you know. Aww. Benny, what a pleasure to meet you. And I'm Claire Fullerton and I live in Malibu, California, but I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, which is why I have the accent. I'm a traditionally published author of four novels and one novella, um, I think 10 anthologies, poetry, and I have recently completed my fifth manuscript, which I will not talk about until Ooh. next year. Uh, so so we'll save that, but, but y'all will be on my list of the first to know. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm big on um, you know, language. I, I, I love the poetry of language, uh, and I really pay scrutinous attention to that and almost before I pay attention to the story. But that's that's the type of reader I am and the type of writer I am. I love Pat Conroy. I love Ann River Siddons. I love Ron Rash. I love Michael Ferris Smith. I'm now reading M.R. Toll's The Lincoln Highway. I'm a big fan of Donna Tartt. I think she's incomparable. And so, yeah, I like um, to keep abreast of, of you know the field and my craft and the game and read the excellent writers and and to always inform my, you know my own process my own craft and and i'll wrap this up by saying summarily the good thing with writing is there is no there to get to i've said that many times there's only the the path there's only the growth of wanting to continue to uh get better at it you know it's a it's a labor of love and it's a it's a pursuit that's a labor of love as well for me and so uh, I enjoy it immensely. I come to it quite naturally. Uh, I've never taken a class or done any of that, other than one short story, one short story class from a bunch of Irish writers that I admire. I wanted to see how they approach the craft of short story writing. It is an art. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of trying my hand at that um, just to see if I can do it. I've never really sat down and said, I'm going to focus on, on short stories. So I'm thinking of doing that uh as, as well i think i'm going to have a bit of a road ahead of me between now and uh, my fifth novels you know making its way into the world um i want to get right this time with you know, where i place it and all these kinds of things and yeah. so 
th that's what I'm doing. But I, I love staying in touch with my friends, with my girls, and I'm, I can't be more pleased that my internet came on. Right yes. Or, uh, it's just fate. <laughs> it's fate. It is. So good to see you. So great to be here. Now, Claire, you also do reviews. Who are you writing reviews for these days? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm considered on staff with the New York Journal of Books. And um, I do that to, uh, you know, give something to the to the writers that are out there that are working so hard. And um, they, they tend to be books from the big publishers because how the New York Journal of Books works is that the publishing houses give the New York Journal of Books their list of uh, their books that are coming out. And so the idea is to read the advanced review copy and have that review written and ready for release day. And um, so looking at that list, uh, again, when I, when I read some of the writers with, you know, uh, long careers and, and high repute, it does inform my writing when I see what the big publishers are putting out and mm -hmm. who these writers are. So, so that's, you know, one of my motivations for, for, for just, staying you know in in awareness of what it is that's uh, being published these days with that and i like the idea of you know helping authors um in any way that i possibly can and i think well if i can write a review uh that somehow helps to get the word around that their book is out then that makes me happy to be involved on that level as well I love the author community. I mean, it is such a yeah. supportive place. It, it really is. Um, I've made some tremendous friends in the author community. I mean, of course, clearly everyone on the screen, plus so many more. I mean, countless friends that have supported one another as as their work comes out. And it's just such a joy to be part of that community and to be it's able so to give a platform to people. I mean, I'm, I'm not a, a reviewer. Um, your reviews are stunning, by the way. If you ever get the chance to read a Claire Fullerton review, they are beautiful. <laughs> they're here's, works here's of the art trick. themselves. You just just say what the book is about. Tell the reader what the book is about and keep yourself always, the, the cardinal sin is to interject yourself in a review so just say what the book's about and anybody can do it anybody just, can do it but you're you are such a wordsmith i mean you're the way that you craft a review just the words that you choose i mean your writing i was mentioning jeff Sentner's book earlier that i'm reading into the wild light and jeff writes poetry so sorry. hi laura I have my family waiting upstairs for dinner. So. Go feed those family. Go okay, but you guys them. talk as long as you All right, want. we'll talk for a minute more. Nice to see you, Laura. Good to see you, too. See you, Laura. Bye, guys. Bye. But uh, Jeff Sentner writes very much the same way that you do. I was talking about just the the beauty behind the words that, that he uses. And it's, it's just, there's an elegance in it. And at the same time, it seems very real and just authentic to the characters and, and you write very much the same way and, and I love to read your work for that that voice that you bring to it and Benny you've got that political just that sharpness that comes with it and that intrigue I mean it's just it's amazing how many different types of writers are out there and we're all so supportive of of one another i mean i've, I've yet to right. find somebody and then maybe they're out there and I'm maybe different genres that have their pockets of of snippiness i mean that's what we say in the south right don't be snippy right. <laughs> right. There's a southern right. word for don't be snippy so you know maybe there's some snippiness in some of those those other circles but i have been blessed to be in contact with some fantastic people who write fantastic books and i love to look at the people first because when you look at the people and you get to know those authors for the fantastic people that they are it adds so much dimension and so so much more depth to the writing because you know the souls that that were producing that that were that were creating that and i, I love i love being part of this community and i'm just that, so that blessed is, to have it that's absolutely correct and 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 the thing about it is you don't have to necessarily like to read the same genre as writer friends that you have oh, yeah. uh th this community of people is i swear the nicest people that, I, that i've ever met i mean great great people to be around and you know what something else that and i actually mentioned this when i when i won that silver fountain award and, and you know they asked you to say a few things i told them how proud i was to be a part of the writing community because of everybody being so nice uh and supportive 
Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, something that's also very important to me is everybody is intelligent. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's just a, 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 a smartness about everybody. They, 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 they think they're deep thinkers. Yeah. And, and I really appreciate being around people like that. So, and uh, the hearts, I mean, they, they're, they're so smart and they're, they, everybody has kind of their, their niche of their things yeah. that they're passionate about and that they really just get fired up about and they're wanting to yeah. learn about and whether it's craft or characters or just even extracurricular things that we do. I say extracurricular because I'm a teacher, but you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So all of these extra things that, that, be, that are part of the person. And I, that's what I love about it so much. I love talking to, to Claire and, and seeing all of your beautiful pictures of Malibu and your gorgeous dogs. I mean, you know, Dudley and, Dudley, you know, right. Dudley's my, my sidekick over there. And so you're going to get to know Dudley if you're going to get to know me. We've right. got such great people with such depth and breadth. And they, you know, they're drawing from all of those experiences and lifting each other up in so many right. ways. And yes, you don't have to, to be passionate about the genre that someone writes about exactly. to enjoy that author and right. to get to know them as people. It's admiration for the individuality with which they choose to express them themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that what's so great about writers and it's similar with actors is that they're bringing themselves uh, to the art Mm -hmm. as an instrument. And I think that if, if you pay attention to how most writers write, you find that they speak the same way and, and yeah. how they speak, they, they write the same way. And so what, what they're really doing is laying themselves bare for who they are and what their thought process is, because it's, it's one thing to have a story, but you can take that one story and put it in the hands of four different writers and you will get four different ways, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily vantage points. They could all have ostensibly the same vantage point and yet come to it with different phraseology. Yeah. And that's going to be part and parcel uh, to, to their makeup, to, to who they are and what their background is and all mm -hmm. of these things. And so I've found that, you know, with, with plenty of writers that I've read, um, for instance, I'll mention Donna Tartt again, because I did earlier. If you, if you read Donna Tartt, you know, you, you start to become clear on who she is as a person and then to see her interviewed, you know, the way she speaks is very similar to the, to the way that she writes in, in mm -hmm. terms of, of just what the what the thought process is behind her explaining anything. You know, so that, that's what's so good about the writing community is I think it is a personal community because everybody's bringing their authentic self um, to, to the table. You know, there, there's really nowhere to duck and hide yes. as a writer and for a writer. And, and I think that's what makes it all so compelling. And, and it's that. And I think that we're all extremely passionate um, about what we're doing and, and more so, more saliently, why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of it is the why. Yeah. You know, we, we none of us came to this for the glory and riches. I mean, that, that's we had stories to tell. We had something that was on our heart, on our mind that we wanted to share. And when you come to it with that honesty behind why you're actually writing this, that's where the good stuff comes from. And what you know, and for instance, you, Nola, I'll go ahead and, and you know, recommend you uh, very highly Thank is, you. you know, your understanding and, and your experience uh, and your interpretation of New Orleans, for instance. And, and you know, you managed to call the, the real vibe of that place about, you know, what's in the air and what, what it feels like and what makes it unique and magic. So, so it, it's one thing to describe it, you know, as, as, as how it seems visually. Mm -hmm. well, well, anybody could do that, yeah. but few people could really capture the feel of the place uh, and, and why it feels that way. And, you know, you do that beautifully. You do it beautifully. Thank you. And that is high praise coming from someone who can set a scene. My God, I mean, you just, your, your words are just poetry on a page. So I am grateful for that compliment. Thank you so very much. Atmosphere is, is a big part of, of telling a story. And when you have a, a city like New Orleans, atmosphere is everything. It is. And yeah. for people who haven't been, I could describe the architecture that's been there for 300 years but it's the feel of the place. It's the soul of the place. And there's so many places in the world where, where you can find 
that soul. And each writer is going to find the place where their soul lives. And I don't live in New Orleans anymore, but I always say that my soul does. I mean, that's that's where it is. That's where it's at home. And it is it is an immersive experience for me when I sit down to write. What a great word. What a great word. It's an immersive experience. Mm -hmm. See, that true. word right there, fathoms deep. It says mm -hmm. it all. It mm -hmm. corners everything. Yep, that is truly immersive. And I want my readers to be immersed in it as well. And if they don't have the opportunity to go see the New Orleans that I see, the, the New Orleans that I feel, then it's up to me and my words to provide that for them. Agreed. And I hope that I do. I, I really hope that I do. I think that you do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, my goodness, it has been so much fun having you join me. I'm so glad. But I think Benny dropped out early. He was having connection issues. So we're going to say bye-bye to Benny too. <laughs> we didn't get an official well, farewell. Pleasure, Benny, <laughs> and, and to see you and to see Laura. And I'm just so glad that uh, the stars aligned for us. And thank you so much for having me. I am so glad that they did as well. Thank you so much. Um, pushing through those internet issues. We've been going back and forth all week and going, oh, I hope, I hope. <laughs> so I'm so glad that it worked out. It is always a pleasure to chat with you, my friend. And you too, Nola. Please go check out Claire's work as well as Co Gray by Benny Sims. And um, of course, Laura's working on editing her sequel. And I've got Traveler coming out in March. So lots of great books to add to your to, to be read lists. And we are thrilled to have you guys join us for another episode of BYOB. We will be back next month, getting a little closer to Christmas. We've got um, an exciting guest coming up in December as well. Well, I say next month. We're actually going to have a show at the end of November of, of this month, since this is November 1st. So, but we will have a show kind of bookending November here and then another great show for you coming up in December. I'm excited about our guest then as well. So it'll be a lot of fun. So thank you so much for joining us here on BYOB, a copywritten podcast of authors on the air. And we will see you next time.